Tonight is October the 1st, 2021. Thought I'd uh, start a video. I said I was going to build a, uh, I suffered another gentleman was going to build a um, big push pull 810 amplifier with uh, transformers made for 810s. That's kind of handy, isn't it? I don't know if this um, starting videos like this is better for the newcomer or the old timer, but uh, hopefully uh, you both will get something out of it. Uh, working with high voltage, this will be about 2600 volts. It's a completely different world from working with 450 volts on a um, on a 6L6 family of amplifiers, you know. I mean, some of these KT88 6550 amplifiers and I guess uh, KT120s, etc. go up to 750, even 800 volts. A music man amplifier I worked on one time, I remember, with EL34s and it had 750 volts on the plate. That's actually getting kind of scary. But um, when you work with the next class of tubes and you're working with transmitter tubes at 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 volts, this, like I say, in this case, it'd be about 2,600. It's a completely different ball game, and you don't usually get shocked by it. You could just be likely to get killed. And even if you don't get killed, if you get shocked between, um, say, like your hand and your elbow, it can make holes in your elbow and your fingertips so it's gonna do you a lot of harm so the first thing to do when you work with amplifiers like this is stay alive and the second thing you do is don't burn up your tubes if you can do those two things you actually may be able to make it work well let me get started here I want some thoughts on this and this is also a uh, video to my friend with the dilemma that I'm having right now. If we look at the front of it, okay, that's basically what it'll look like. Sorry, I've got to, uh, I can't get the, uh, there we go. I want these, uh, I'm looking for thoughts on it. But I was thinking about cutting the front panel out right here so you can see the tubes, mounting the meters over here. There's the grid bias variac. A little bit of an overkill, but we may be able to substitute that variac with a, um, I don't know, a potentiometer, but be kind of large in size. Here's the power supply. It's not going to go in this chassis. These are uh, 20,000 volt PIV, 2 amp each. I'm going to make a bridge. Uh, you know, the positive and negative and the AC goes right there. Here's a bank of capacitors. This has nothing to do with it right here. These will be the input capacitors. Then it'll go through the choke and these will be the output capacitors. The way that I do is I run a bare wire from negative to positive, negative to positive, and on down, negative to positive. See, this will be the negative end. Here's the positive. I'll put a little bit, bit of red fingernail polish there probably. Same thing down here, negative to positive. Put them all in series. And then you have to put some... Uh, voltage equalizing your resistors across each one. So this is a little bit of tedious work. Wire running between them and a resistor across each one. That also helps bleed them down. It's not a good safety uh, factor for bleeding them down because it can take several minutes, but eventually it will. It's better than nothing. And you gotta have them across there to, to um, equalize the voltages also because if you think about this, one, two, three, four, seven, say they're 400, volts piece, 4 times 7 uh, is 2800, just, just an example, but you want 400 volts across each one, and if you don't put a, an equalizing resistor in series with them, you're liable to have 600 volts across this one, and 300 volts across this one, and who knows, uh, d d just depending on the um, the quality of the capacitor, so you got to equalize them. We used to do that a lot with uh, those top hat diodes, but I don't do it anymore, I don't find it necessary. Um, the top hat diodes, if you remember, in, in, in series strings, had a, a capacitor and a resistor across it. Don't think it's necessary anymore. Anyway, there's the uh, power transformer we're going to use right there. It's 2,000 volt center tap. It's rated in uh, actually uh, 1850 uh, with 115 volts in. So anyway, it's 2,000. So the dilemma right now is... There's not a lot of room in this chassis, in this cabinet. 
If the tubes are going to sit right here, then I've marked off their space right here. Um, now I need a chassis over here and a chassis on the back to mount that uh, transformer on. And I want them to be two inches tall. I don't have any two inch chassis. I have a boatload of new chassis, but I don't have any two inch high ones. And I uh, can't make it any higher than two inches or this transformer won't fit. These can't go on it as is because they won't fit. They're too tall. They have to be mounted right here. Maybe I'll mount them on a board too that, in, that just inserts, you know, like this particle board right here because I got a lot of this. This stuff works really good. And I have, um, I put every kind of voltage you can think about on it. And if I'm really concerned, what I've done in my uh, one transmitter is I put uh, holes through here to mount it, and I, made, and I mounted it up on um, nylon screws, so it's actually got a equivalent of a spacer down here too, lifting it off the chassis slightly with nylon screws. That's, <laughs> I think that's probably getting a little bit paranoid, but makes me feel good. So that is it at the moment. We're not going to go anywhere until this chassis problem is solved. This needs to be, the width is 17 and the depth is 17. This is a 17 by 17 inch platform right there. Um, the absolute, absolute smallest this transformer chassis can be 7 inches. So if this was 7, then this would be 10 to fill it out. But I think it should be more like 8 or even 9. Say it's 8 inches, then this will be uh, uh, the remainder to make it 17, which would be a 9, right? 80, 60, 70, yes. Then this will be a 9 inch chassis, 9 by 17. But this one, this one needs to be the difference between the size of this chassis and the uh, and the maximum distance of 17 and absolutely no shorter than 7 inches forward. Probably around 8 or 9. So if I had an 8 by 8 there, and a um, 11 by 17 over here, then we could put them together, it'd be great. The, chat, the uh, front panel will come down like this and then come across so it has a, an attachment point over here. We want to be able to touch it to the equipment properly. I'll show you the, uh, the meters. Let me stand this thing back up. Sorry for all the bumping around, but I don't do these things over and over like I have in the past. I either get it right or I don't get it at all. Here's the plate voltage meter. Pretty little thing. 3,000 volts full scale, so that'll measure it. Should be up there to 25 to 2700 volt mark. And um, so that's that meter. And then we got this meter. So we're, you know. We're cooking. Isn't that a beauty? 500 milliamps. I think 450 milliamps is uh, all the plate current should uh, draw at full power. So this thing, I'm going to be <laughs> running class B. I'm sure you can be bouncing it, <laughs> pegging the needle. Um, yeah, I might mention something on this chassis right here, on the power supply chassis, or maybe I'll build it into the uh, amplifier itself. But one of the things that's talking about that you just can't make too many, you can't make the same kind of mistakes uh, at, at 2,500 volts that you can make um, at 4,500 volts. And that is, you do not want high voltage to be, even be able to occur until you have bias voltage on the tubes. Now that's because these are low mu triodes. It's a, if it's a high mu triode like a 3500Z, 3400Z, 3000Z, etc., or the um, 4-400 family of tubes strapped for a triode, you don't need any bias until you get above about 4000 volts because they have a gain of 200. The gain of these, I don't remember, but it's you look it up, 810. It's something like 25, 20 or 25, so it's very low. So it's linear. So it, make a, it should make a good Class B amplifier. Well, it will. That's what they were designed for. And that is the class this one will be running in, Class B. It means one tube conducts and then it shuts off and the other tube conducts. 
that's class B so it's able to put out a lot of watt uh, a lot of power 725 watts what they rated at so we ought to be able to get every bit of that much so anyway I got to build some circuitry either onto here or into here to monitor the um, the bias voltage to make sure it's reasonable uh, before it'll allow a signal that's going to go back over here by well of an umbilical type cable to the um, power supply. Won't let the high voltage come up without bias. Also on screen grid tubes you cannot put screen grid voltage on there without bias and plate voltage. It'll uh, it'll destroy your tube instantly and you, you'll never even know what happened. It was bad from the beginning. That's especially true like the 4CX1000 which can only run AB1. Well anyway that's enough of that uh, off the cuff thing. Here, here, here's some little meters that I have started discovering lately. I like to use some kind of a little uh, LED type meter. Uh, these I've, I've got in red, blue, and clear. And then also uh, you can get the same kind of a thing that's in a little square box. I use that. I like to have a um, a meter down there, a little digital meter, uh, showing me what the bias voltage is. You know, you don't adjust the bias voltage for some exact voltage. You adjust the bias voltage for some exact plate current, resting plate current. That's what you do on these types of amplifiers. Okay, well that's it for right now. I guess I'll see if I can post this and. Um, I'm sure I left out about a thousand things, but got to get those chassis. Without those chassis. We're going nowhere.